In the previous lesson we are discuss what is the differential pressure transmitter and how to use this. You can find the link to this video in the description. If you haven't already done so, you might want to review of our other videos. What is differential pressure transmitter? You can find the links to these videos in the description. Okay, in this lesson we are going to discuss how to correctly and safely calibrate the differential pressure transmitter. Let's start the video. Industrial automation. So if you enjoy this video as much as we enjoyed making it, click the like button, subscribe and click the bell and you'll receive notifications of new videos. Remember before calibrate the transmitter, must be removed from service. The flow transmitter connected across the orifice produces a current output of 4 milliamps at 0 liter per minute or 0 gallons per minute and 20 milliamps at 189 liter per minute or 50 gallons per minute. We need to check and recalibrate if necessary as we will be looking at the output current from the flow transmitter. The first thing we need is a calibration chart or table. A table like this or similar is usually kept on file at your place of work. This table is important from a calibration perspective, as it indicates what we need to apply to the transmitter, and what the expected. Here's the calibration setup. The scissor type hand pump with a digital pressure readout is connected to the high pressure side of the transmitter. There are several different types of pressure sources used in the industry. Note that the low pressure side of the transmitter is vented to the atmosphere. A digital multimeter set to measure current is connected in series with the transmitter and the 24 volt power supply. From the table, we can see that if we set the hand pump input pressure to 50 inches of water column, our multimeter should read 8 milliamps. Okay, now we've seen how the calibration table will work for us. We've got the transmitter all set up. Let's do some testing. First of all, we're going to check to see if the transmitter needs to be adjusted. We begin by applying the desired pressure input values from the calibration table to the high input on the flow transmitter and record the output current measured for each input value. If the output currents measured are outside of the acceptable ranges as established by your company, then the transmitter must be recalibrated using the zero and span adjustments. We perform the actual calibration using the zero and span adjustments on the transmitter. Apply the 0% input pressure value, which for us is 0 inches water column, to the transmitter and adjust the zero until we get an output current of 4 milliamps. Apply the 100% input pressure value, which for us is 200 inches water column, to the transmitter and adjust the span until we get an output current of 20 milliamps. Repeat the steps until adjustments are no longer required. Now that you've recalibrated, it's a good idea to apply all of the values from the calibration table and record the corresponding output current values. Let's return the transmitter to service now that it's been calibrated. Checking and calibrating the transmitter is completed. By using values found in a calibration table or chart kept on site, the zero and span adjustments are used to obtain a specific current output range for a 0% and a 100% differential pressure input. After calibration, a transmitter is returned to service by opening the equalizing valve first, then opening the high pressure block valve second, followed by closing the equalization valve and finally opening the low pressure block valve. If you want to know how to calibrate the differential pressure transmitter with the square root extractor, then send your comment in the comment box.